The gypsy moth is a leaf-eating insect and is among America's most destructive and invasive forest pests. The gypsy moth is non-native to the United States, and these leaf-eating caterpillars are damaging our forests through defoliation at a current average of approximately 800,000 acres annually. The gypsy moth was brought to Massachusetts from Europe in the late 1800s by a scientist who wanted to breed a hardier silkworm. A few of the insects escaped, and since then, the gypsy moth has been munching its way across the United States and is now in Wisconsin and threatening to establish itself in Minnesota. Movement was initially slow, as the natural spread of the moth is only about a mile and a quarter per year and is done by the larvae blowing in the wind or ballooning. However, human travel has accelerated its progression to about 15 miles per year through artificial movement. Transporting camping gear, lawn furniture, firewood, and nursery stock can carry egg masses to new areas and start new infestations. Each year, without their knowledge, people help these pests hitchhike to new areas. That is why it is called the gypsy moth. The introduction of invasive or exotic plant pests is a growing threat to both businesses and environment. The gypsy moth is no exception. Marinette County, Wisconsin Gypsy Moth Suppression Coordinator Vicki Feige has heard horror stories on how invasive gypsy moth caterpillars can be. They can't go out into the yards uh, during the day because the feces is dro dropping. It sounds like rain. Uh, you can't go out with a can of soda, a cup of coffee. Uh, it's floating on top within minutes. For the nursery operator, the gypsy moth is a threat to business as well as environment. By the time infested stock is identified, cross-contamination of other plants on your site can occur. Some infested stock may have been sold to other nursery dealers, landscapers, and homeowners, spreading the pest to other areas. To prevent the unknowing spread of gypsy moth requires awareness of the problem, education on how to address it, and possibly a change in your work practices. But the effort spent today to halt the spread of this pest will help avoid a much bigger problem tomorrow. John Daniels, Bachman's Nursery, says that an isolated infestation in advance of the gypsy moth population front can impact your business immediately. In 94, when we had that breach, we actually shut our business down for a day as we uh, struggled a little bit to get a handle on what was happening and, and how we were going to deal with it. So it can affect us um, in that way. John goes on to say that the cost for treatments of an isolated infestation are minimal compared to those of a widespread gypsy moth infestation. Chemical treatments uh, the following year were in excess of $5,000. That was pretty much a one-time deal. We had complete success in eradication of the pest. Um, so the cost, as long as we don't have the insect here, is, is minimal. Uh, other than affecting how we source our product that we, that we purchase, um, the cost is minimal. Now, when the pest actually is here, it will be a different story, and, and time will tell how that will pan out. Quarantines were established to eliminate the artificial movement of the gypsy moth. Naturally, gypsy moth populations spread at a rate of about one and a quarter mile per year, with larvae being blown on the wind. But when the gypsy moth hitchhikes on articles such as outdoor lawn equipment, campers, firewood, timber products, or nursery stock, the spread rate is artificially increased to approximately 15 miles per year. To reduce this artificial spread, the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, or APHIS, may establish quarantine. An area is quarantined when permanent gypsy moth populations are found to be reproducing. Under quarantine, Movement of items that could harbor the insect is restricted. Currently, there are 19 states and Washington, D.C. under gypsy moth quarantine. The areas in red were quarantined when this video was produced, but quarantine lines change on an annual basis as the gypsy moth moves westward. For current information, visit the APHIS website. Quarantine restrictions can impact your way of doing business, and you're impacted by these restrictions whether you're in a quarantine state or not. It is strongly recommended that firms importing nursery stock from regulated areas provide training on gypsy moth identification to all employees who work with your stock.
With the cooperation of the nursery industry, quarantines work. Quarantines appear to be very effective. In the past 10 years, Virginia has had only one isolated infestation out of the generally infested area. That was in 1999, and that infestation was eradicated. So early detection of that infestation enabled us to have a successful eradication. While a violation of USDA quarantine regulations may result in regulatory action, most nurseries cooperate voluntarily. While discovering and reporting an infestation can be a short-term inconvenience, the alternative is much worse. The costs of unreported infestations include more than money. They affect your customers, your local environment, and your reputation. Effective quarantines are a critical tool in the battle against the gypsy moth. Quarantines are a vital part of controlling the spread of the gypsy moth. Quarantines make industry and individuals step up to the plate and become legally responsible for seeing their products are gypsy moth life stage free. Once a state or county becomes quarantined for the gypsy moth, it becomes increasingly difficult to legally send gypsy moth regulated articles across its borders. The gypsy moth moves naturally on its own, however, man aid the spread of the gypsy moth tremendously with the illegal movement of regulated articles. This is why we require industry and individuals to certify their products gypsy moth life stage free. Federal and state agencies need all the information you can provide about the presence of gypsy moth life stages. It would be very beneficial if we know where those life stages of gypsy moth are, besides the male moths we get in our traps. That helps us to make decisions on our treatment sites so that we can use that to slow the progression and spread of gypsy moth as it comes across the state. That'll help nurseries on down the road. The more information a nursery can give to us, the better off they will be in the long run. If your nursery purchases stock from a supplier in a gypsy moth quarantined area, your nursery would be considered a high-risk location for a gypsy moth introduction. All nursery stock and firewood being shipped out of a quarantined county must be inspected and certified. Regulated quarantined areas cannot ship items to non-regulated areas of the United States without proper certification. If they do, they can be charged with a quarantine violation. As a receiving nursery, you're responsible for verifying that stock shipped from quarantined areas has been properly certified at the point of origin. Stock must be accompanied by shipping documents to prove this certification. In Minnesota, Department of Agriculture has regulatory authority to prevent the dissemination of injurious plant pests, including gypsy moths. State and federal agencies also perform surveys for early detection of gypsy moth. Because of your unique position in the distribution chain, the nursery industry is a critical partner in halting the spread of this devastating pest. Inspection of your stock is the key. State departments of agriculture across the country conduct survey programs to monitor for gypsy moth populations. In the infested areas of the United States, monitoring is done to understand population dynamics, while in non-infested areas of the U.S., monitoring is done to identify isolated infestations related to the artificial spread of gypsy moth. The trapping program is the primary means of finding new infestations. We use the trapping numbers to go out to various locations to look for reproducing populations. It's important that the state or the USDA obtain an accurate result from their traps. One way retailers can help is to not offer the over-the-counter gypsy moth traps for sale. As a state agency doing the monitoring and detection for gypsy moth, we, we recommend folks do not purchase these traps uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's really a sense of a false sense of security. These traps are actually uh, for detection, not control. Additionally, these traps, by catching a portion of the gypsy moth population in an area, can adversely influence data obtained in the state trapping programs. Areas containing private traps may indicate a lower number of gypsy moths than are actually present, which will affect state treatment and control programs. Please do not offer these traps for sale. To thoroughly inspect your nursery stock, you need to be able to identify gypsy moth life stages. The gypsy moth goes through four stages of development. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult or moth. 
It has one generation per year. The most commonly encountered life stage is the egg mass. The egg stage occurs from midsummer through the following spring. During the summer, the female moth attaches and conceals egg masses in protected areas on bark, trees, stones, walls, logs, and articles left outdoors such as vehicles, campers, and furniture. The egg masses are fuzzy and light tan in color. Their size is about one and a half inches long and three quarters of an inch wide. Each egg mass can contain up to 1,000 viable caterpillars. Egg hatch is dependent on weather. In the Twin Cities, the egg hatch can begin in early May, but near the Canadian border, the egg hatch can be delayed until mid-June. You should check with your State Department of Agriculture to learn when the typical egg hatch begins in your area. Egg masses are often unknowingly moved by people because they're laid on outdoor surfaces, picnic tables, car wheel wells, even tents and firewood. The eggs are dormant in the winter. The following spring, the eggs begin to hatch and the life cycle starts over again. The most damaging life stage is the larval or caterpillar stage. Gypsy moth caterpillars eat more than 300 different kinds of deciduous trees and shrubs. Favorite meals include oak, apple, aspen, birch, poplar, and willow trees. When the gypsy moth caterpillar first hatches, it's about an eighth of an inch long, hairy, and dark brown or black. Mature caterpillars are up to two and a half inches long with five pair of blue spots and six pair of rusty red spots on their back, making them easy to identify. The caterpillars feed in May, June, and July. During its lifetime, a gypsy moth caterpillar can eat up to one square yard of leaves. With up to a thousand of these leaf-eating caterpillars hatching from only one egg mass, leaf damage and defoliation can quickly occur. Consider this. Five female moths each lay an egg mass in the trees by your home. As each egg mass contains about a thousand eggs, We now have 5,000 eggs, which hatch into 5,000 hungry caterpillars. Each caterpillar will devour a square yard of leaves, and 5,000 yards is equal to the area of a football field. Depending on weather and climate, caterpillars stop feeding in the southern United States in May and in July in the northern states. For help determining feeding periods in your area, contact your state agriculture department. Caterpillar now transforms into a dark reddish-brown pupae. It is not encased in a protective cover or cocoon. Silk threads produced by the caterpillar during this transformation attach the pupae to tree trunks, rocks, and boards. The male moth has plumed or feathered antenna and has brownish-gray wings with black wavy markings. They have a one and a half inch wingspan, are slow flyers, and unlike most moths, do not fly at night and are not attracted to lights. Female moths are larger than males. They're white to cream colored with brown W-shaped zigzags on their wings. They have a two and a half inch wingspan and cannot fly due to their large abdomen. Each female moth lays one egg mass. Adult moths do not feed. The moths mate, lay their eggs, and two weeks later, both the male and female moths die. The most important thing that a nursery can do on the war against the gypsy moth is to be aware of what the life stages look like, what life stage is present during what months of the year, so that then they can identify the problem if it occurs at their area and notify their nearest state agriculture inspector. Knowledge about the gypsy moth free certification process by your nursery staff is your best defense to keep gypsy moths from impacting your business. In Minnesota, Department of Agriculture inspectors do conduct pest surveys which include gypsy moth. However, these nursery inspections are prioritized based upon risk of plant pest introduction. Review of shipping documents will verify that stock is properly certified. You must show a certificate of quarantine compliance to the inspector that shows that the stock is from a certified source. When you get your shipments, review certification documentation prior to unloading the product. 
Make sure shipments from quarantined areas arrive with the proper documentation and, as the shipment is covered under interstate regulations, don't unload it without this documentation. If necessary, call the USDA office for assistance. If stock arrives with no proper documentation, contact the shipping company or supplier and your state regulating agency immediately. If certification is not possible, you're advised to refuse the shipment. The Federal Shield should be present on all corresponding paperwork and affirms that the plants meet all state and federal quarantines. The Federal Shield is required on the shipping documentation. Please be aware, documentation does not guarantee the shipment is free of gypsy moth. It only confirms that stock was treated and or inspected at the point of origin and was found to be free from the gypsy moth then. As a receiving nursery, you still need to inspect the shipments as you are responsible for your stock and will be held accountable if gypsy moth is found. To help ensure pest-free shipments, you should conduct visual inspections of your stock upon arrival to your nursery. Look for signs of gypsy moth life stages as well as other insects or diseases. Tag questionable stock with a ribbon. Keep stock from gypsy moth quarantined areas isolated in a separate area on your site to prevent potential contamination. Here's a demonstration of a proper inspection. Once you get it unloaded, you want to do, take a good inspection, take a good look at your stock. Um, looking on the undersides, the crotch of the branch, all the way up to the upper branches, you know, go all the way to the top. If you need to, go ahead and tip that tree so you can get all the way to that top and take a good look. Um, turning it as necessary, go ahead, you know, turn the tree, do another good look, um, all the way up. Uh, a good place for gypsy moth, what gypsy moth love to do is tree collars. Uh, tree guards, whether they're wraps or collars, you want to go ahead and remove those uh, when you do get the stock in. So go ahead, remove those collars. Uh, gypsy moth love to hide within collars because it's a nice sheltered, protected area. Um, and here I've mocked up an egg mass. You can actually see one attached right here to the trunk. Before you go ahead and discard your, your tree collar or tree guard, you want to go ahead, take a good look in that tree collar. Make sure you're looking all the way down it because again, here's another good mock up. Another thing in, in your potted plants is to feel into the brim of the pot. Uh, run your fingers around the underside. If you can't get down low enough to take a look there, make sure you're, you're feeling all the way around, rolling the pot, taking a good look. And, and here I feel something suspicious. So uh, look down. And, yep, there we go. We have a mock-up of an egg mass right under the brim. Another perfect sheltered location. Uh, those are some of the key components when you're doing a pot inspection. If you sell Christmas trees, the inspection process is similar. In Christmas trees, one thing, every time you're handling a particular tree species, it's your opportunity to, to look at the tree, inspect it. Um, every time, I'd, I'd encourage any time you're picking up trees, handling it any time, any staff member, uh, to go ahead and always look. Look for egg masses, look for life stages. Um, but one of the key components when you're doing a Christmas tree uh, inspection is definitely after the material has been cut, you do want to go ahead and flip the tree over. Um, and looking down the undersides, down the trunk, uh, from the bottom. And what you can see as you're looking in, here we have a couple of mock-up egg masses. It's just Velcro, but I mocked it up for, this, for, the, for the training here today. As if you look up the trunk of the tree, you can actually see they're much more visible than had I looked at the tree when it's sitting upright. Um, you can see an egg, a mock-up here, as well as down into the interior under the crotch of the branch uh, near the trunk just below and in the inside here. Um, don't be shy, go ahead and turn the, turn the tree, um, looking at all angles. Gypsy Moth is looking for a hidden location to lay that egg mass. She's not necessarily looking for something in which is good to eat per se, um, but is definitely sheltered and, and can protect that egg mass over the winter. If you suspect you found a gypsy moth life stage or another regulated plant pest, tag the tree and contact your state regulatory agency or the USDA immediately. They may wish to view your finding in person or they may discuss the pest on the phone. If a gypsy moth infestation is identified at your site, you may be required to enter into a compliance agreement. Compliance agreements are established to contain the infestation, yet allow for businesses to continue their operations. 
Under a compliance agreement, nursery staff are trained in inspection procedures to allow nursery stock to be inspected, certified gypsy moth free, and sold. Once under a compliance agreement, you may be allowed to remove any life stages, including egg masses you find prior to shipment. In order to remove the egg mass, you'll be using a product like Golden Natural Pest Spray. And as with all pesticides, before you either mix or apply the spray, you'll be wearing protective gloves. So before you get to the field, pre-mix the spray according to label directions. Then thoroughly soak the egg mass, making sure you get all the scattered eggs surrounding the egg mass. Really give it a good soaking. And then with something like a pocket knife, carefully scrape the entire egg mass into a container of soapy water and leave it in the soapy water for a couple of days before you dispose of it. Maintain all shipping records including packing lists and certification documentation for each shipment received and keep them for at least two seasons. Records must be available for inspection by your state agency or the USDA. Remind staff to watch for signs of regulated or unusual pests. Additional practices should include... In the receiving states, we advise the following to nursery owners. Ensure the material you receive from regulated states is accompanied by a valid certificate. Learn what gypsy moth life stages look like and how to inspect for them. Segregate material you receive from gypsy moth regulated areas in a separate area of your nursery away from other stocks as much as possible. Inspect it for gypsy moth or do a treatment when you receive it before you commingle it with the other stock. Here are some guidelines to help ensure pest-free shipments. Know your suppliers. Screen and select product sources carefully. Purchase locally grown stock or from areas that do not have regulated pests if possible. Know what pests are being regulated in the area you're purchasing from. Confirm with the supplier that all required documentation will accompany the order. You can contact your state agency for updated information. Ask about pest monitoring and control programs. Buy from places that use systems that ensure compliance with state and federal plant pest regulations. Make sure that the product is adequately certified. When you order your product, make sure to tell the supplier that proper state or federal certification will be required with all shipments as a condition of purchase and that failure to provide proper certification at the time of shipment may void the transaction. Request written evidence that product will be certified by state or federal authorities to be pest-free at the time of shipment. For a federally regulated pest, a copy of a current nursery certificate or license alone is not adequate. Request sample documentation to minimize potential problems later. Make sure this documentation will accompany each shipment from each vendor. Contact your local regulating agency if there are any questions about the correct documentation required. Finally, protect stock from quarantined areas by applying preventative insecticide treatments when leaf-feeding caterpillars are active. This added insurance may prevent an infestation. Other considerations you need to be aware of include Nursery stock dealers or nursery stock growers must purchase and sell only certified nursery stock. Minnesota landscapers, brokers, and tree spade operators are considered nursery stock dealers and must obtain a certificate before offering nursery stock for sale. Those located in other states should check with their state agriculture departments. Trees and shrubs continuously grown in a greenhouse do require certification under gypsy moth regulations. However, there is an expedited process that simplifies the certification process when the plants have been grown in a greenhouse that would prevent infestation. This process requires that an inspection is conducted to verify the greenhouse facility and the growing process will result in plants free of gypsy moth.
With a successful inspection, the nursery will be placed under a compliance agreement and issued certificates that will allow them to certify that the plants meet the federal domestic plant quarantine regulations without the need of inspecting each individual plant. Trees and shrubs grown in hoop houses which are grown outside during warm weather and then brought into the hoop house for winter must be certified. Gypsy moth is a serious threat to forest resources, both urban and rural. But the nursery industry has to understand, too, that this is a manageable insect. We have excellent tools to manage gypsy moth so that it's not a serious economic impact to the nursery industry as well as to landowners and other people. Remember, you are the key to protecting your trees and forests by keeping gypsy moths out of your state and preventing the movement of gypsy moth on all outdoor articles. Do your part to prevent the spread of the gypsy moth pest. We'd like to thank the following people and organizations for their help with this production.